There's been one big change to Tesla's full self-driving that people don't seem to be aware of. All Teslas are equipped with AEB, which is automatic emergency braking. This is part of the automatic safety system in every Tesla you buy. As reported in Tesla's 2021 impact report, since Tesla stopped using radar and switched to vision only, Tesla Vision, the performance of AEB, automatic emergency braking, has improved massively. This switch has improved pedestrian AEB performance in Tesla's vehicles by an incredible 45%. One week ago, we saw video of a Tesla Model 3 using full self-driving actually save the life of the driver. What happened? Well, a Honda ran a red light that Tesla anticipated, saw what had happened, braked as hard as it could quickly, much quicker than a human driver could, and saved the driver's life, which is great news. Many people are wondering how close actually is Tesla to achieving full self-driving. There's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of haters. There's a lot of lovers. There's a lot of people who say that it's never going to happen. But I remember there was a video last year from Jeremy Clarkson from, used to be in Top Gear, right? Now in the Grand Tour on Amazon. Jeremy Clarkson was amazed by how good full self-driving was in the Tesla Model X at the time. But it's changed a lot since then. So how close are they actually now? Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all the new subscribers, and welcome back, everyone else. It's great to see you. Hope you've had an awesome day. Arthur Haslow published this article for Clean Technic, and he says that he purchased his Tesla Model 3 on October the 22nd, 2019. He has done 66,000 miles on the car. He's had one significant repair, which was a squeaky left front suspension joint, which was fixed under warranty. He's had to pay one significant maintenance cost, two sets of tires, for a total of $1,100. He says he's driven his Tesla from the US East Coast to the West Coast using Tesla's supercharged network, and he loves the car. However, he's been using Tesla's full self-driving beta obsessively in his Model 3 now for 150 days. So this should give us a good idea of how good the system actually is today, right now. Not a year ago, when Jeremy Clarkson drove it. On December the 1st, 2021, he passed Tesla's safety test and was able to download full self-driving beta version 10.5. Since then, he's downloaded three updates to the software version 10.8, version 10.10, .10, and version 10.11.2. He uses the software every single day. The longer he says, the longer I use it, the more I can observe whether negative behavior is a unique event, a rare event, or a consistent failure. However, he goes on to say, it still blows my mind that full self-driving beta will drive you from your current location to the place you enter into the navigation without intervention for many routes. It changes lanes, makes turns, adjusts speed, etc., etc., to navigate on city streets, onto interstate highways, and off again. I feel very privileged to be one of the 100,000 drivers in the world to be testing a system which allows my car to drive autonomously, at least in many situations. But not all. So the question is, the $64 million question, what must Tesla change for full self-driving beta to actually reach level five? Well, I personally don't think it's ever gonna reach level five. Well, it's certainly not this decade. It doesn't need to. We only need to reach level four for it to be approved on roads, for it to be safer than a standard driver now. When asked how close Tesla is to achieving full self-driving. Arthur said in his experience, when requiring no interventions and being significantly safer than human drivers, he says he's now using the third version of the full self-driving beta software. And these are his observations. Number one, choosing the correct lane. Full self-driving beta 10.11.2 will choose the correct lane at an intersection most of the time, but not always. However, this is a serious problem because I've observed numerous times where it will put you in the wrong lane rather than the correct lane specified your navigation route. Also, sometimes it will turn into a wide bike lane on the right instead of the correct traffic lane. This could be caused by errors in map data, but as a human driver, I don't need a map and I don't have a problem reading the arrows on the pavement or signs that indicate the correct lane. Also, full self-driving beta will sometimes fail to get into the turn lane in time to make the turn. As a human driver, I observe the traffic conditions and change to the correct lane very soon if the traffic is heavy. I almost never miss a turn because I didn't get into the turn lane soon enough. In order to reach level five full self-driving, we'll have to select the correct lane more of the time. 
Now, I agree with everything he said, but I should point out in my daily driving here in Melbourne, Australia, I see people miss turns constantly and then try to force their way in the last moment, which is very dangerous. So this is still a common, even though it's clearly a feature that Tesla need to change and improve on full self-driving. It's not a problem confined to full self-driving. Humans are making this mistake every day, probably millions of times. Number two, unprotected turns in heavy traffic. Full self-driving beta works extremely well, making protected turns meaning turning at a traffic light. However, for unprotected turns, full self-driving beta doesn't adequately judge when there is a break in the traffic and then make an aggressive move to fit into the break smoothly. The problem could be improved by working with the navigation to find a traffic light when turning onto a busy highway. In order to reach level five, full self-driving will need to be able to make unprotected turns automatically onto busy highways. Point three, speed bumps and dips. In my neighborhood in Utah, we have frequent speed bumps and dips in this relatively dry climate. The sewers frequently run as a dip on top of the road instead of a pipe under it. In both cases, if you don't slow down to 15 miles per hour or sometimes less, you will damage your suspension, bottoming out or jarring your teeth out. In order to reach level five, full self-driving will need to observe speed pumps always and dips and slow down. It doesn't always do that. Number four, phantom braking. Yes, it is a real thing. Too often, full self-driving beta will reduce speed or brake for no apparent reason. In order to reach level five, full self-driving will need to differentiate between legitimate dangers and those that are not legitimate dangers. Number five, phantom swerving. Very rarely, occasionally, full self-driving beta will swerve for no reason. In order to reach level five, full self-driving will need to differentiate between legitimate dangers and those that are not. Number six, premature stopping. At some stop signs, full self-driving beta will cause your car to stop 15 to 20 feet early. In order to reach level five, this has to be fixed. Number seven, running stop signs. There is one stop sign turning from 1650 West onto Snow Canyon Parkway in St. George, Utah, where full self-driving beta will always run that one sign. Number eight, stopping at rotaries. Full self-driving beta will need to stop at the entrance of rotaries even when no cars are present. In order to... Number nine, timid behavior at stop signs. Full self-driving beta will proceed slowly after stopping at a stop sign. Sometimes this isn't ideal. Now these are only his personal observations. Other drivers in other areas may or may not have had these issues. Of course, every area is going to be different and present different challenges. So what does full self-driving beta cost? The current price right now is $12,000 US dollars. Elon Musk says, as this technology keeps getting better, the price will continue to go up. That makes sense in my view. Is the price reasonable though? Well, if the current price is too big of a pill to swallow for an unknown capability, Tesla also lets you try out full self-driving beta as a monthly subscription for $99 US dollars or for $199 US dollars per month, depending on the level of driver assist you've already paid for. The smart crews and auto steer that come with every single Tesla or Tesla autopilot are incredibly worthwhile. Would I pay $12,000 for full self-driving beta? if you ask me now after using it for this many years. If you are a techno nerd like me, it is great fun and very interesting to observe the state of autonomous driving now and watch improvements. Would I pay $12,000 out of a very tight budget for software, which at this time has marginal utility? He says no. Now, a lot of people have become jaded with the software. They think that it might never happen. It might never actually get to where it needs to be. That is possible. However, a lot of people think level three, currently the system right now is well, technically level two, but a lot of people think level three is actually very close, but level five is a long way off. However, level three in theory would be better than about 95% of humans currently on the road. Now that might not be saying a whole lot, right? So what is a level three system? Well, level three systems require the driver to be prepared to take over driving when prompted, but the autonomy is actually reliable enough that the driver doesn't need to keep their hands on the wheel or their eyes on the road. Tesla hasn't yet demonstrated that kind of reliability. Their driving system has impressive capabilities, but they haven't focused nearly as much on safety and reliability and constant driver supervision is still required with full self-driving software. Now, I've gone to quite, onto quite a few forums and looked at the ADAS systems in all cars, meaning the basic autopilot systems in pretty much all modern cars. And guess what? Well, pretty much every single forum for almost every brand says that there is phantom braking happening for all cars. It's a common feature, unfortunately, 
and no one quite knows why it is. Some have speculated that their systems can see ghosts. Personally, I think that's pretty unlikely, but who knows? So to be fair, journalists have tested Tesla's full self-driving against other similar technology from other brands, and they've found that Teslas actually have less less phantom braking events than other brands. However, of course, there's a lot more said about Tesla. There's videos everywhere. There's news advertisements constantly. So there's a lot more criticism put on Tesla. So of course, Tesla is constantly updating full self-driving currently. And the, the system's gonna be probably even different to when I originally made this video. If you're watching this in a few months time, well, there will have been probably a couple of updates since then and things will have changed. This is gonna happen constantly until the system finally gets to the point where you don't have to constantly pay attention. That will be an incredible point in time. Why? It'll completely change the world having autonomous vehicles. Now you might be saying, yeah, but Viking, isn't there already autonomous vehicles coming from like companies like Waymo and Cruise? Well, yeah, technically there is, but those systems are hardwired to very limited geofenced small areas where maps have to be updated every day because those cars, they're basically driving on, like it's like driving on a, on a train track. Those roads are like train tracks because they've been mapped out perfectly. If any changes are made, the cars don't function anymore. So technically, I don't think you consider that full self-driving. Tesla is looking at it from a different approach in order to be able to use your car anywhere at any time. And of course, owners don't own those cars. Those cars are only owned by Waymo or Google and by General Motors or Cruise. So the only way it looks to me is though you'll ever be able to get a car or at least this decade that may be able to drive itself is by buying a Tesla and well, hoping and waiting for Tesla to finally crack the code. My guess is it'll happen probably around about 2025, but who knows? It's been a long waiting game and I know a lot of people being very patient. Maybe you are one of those or maybe you're not. Let me know in the comments section below. Have a great day. And let me know what you think of this software, by the way. What's your opinion? Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.